Assalamu alaikum guys. Hope everybody will be fine. Today in this video lecture, I will guide you for seven basic points for civil engineers. These points can help you during construction of house as well as if you are working on construction sites, so this can help you. Therefore, watch this video till the end to learn something new about basic points. What I will teach you in this basic points. The first one for concept of one way and two way slip, main bars and distribution bars, how to find weight of steel bar for slab beam column also how to provide extra bar in the junction between beam and column practically i will guide you so therefore this is very important to watch till the end let's get started guys if this video is helpful for you so you may like this video the first one is uh, the concept for one way and two way slab okay i saw many students they are working on construction site but they don't have the idea for uh, some technical points so therefore this is important so what is one way and two way slip practically i'm guiding you okay one way and two way slip right remember guys suppose this is a slip okay this is a slip sorry And this is its longer span, which is, for example, six meter. And this is shorter span, which is consider width. This is length, and this is width. Suppose this is two point five meter. So how you will know this is one way or two way slip? So for that, I will give you the example. The example is. As I tell you before, this is longer spin and this is shorter spin. So the longer spin should be divided by shorter spin. The longer spin should be longer spin should be divided by shorter spin. So if the value is if the value is greater than two. Okay, so it means this is one way slip. If the value is greater than two from longer spin divided by shorter spin, if the value is greater than two, so this is one way slip. And how you will know the two way slip? So the longer spin divided by shorter spin when the value is less than. So it means this is two way slip less than sorry less than greater than for one way slip less than for two way slip. So let me do calculation for this one. This is one way slip or two way slip. Then I will guide you for main bars and distribution bars also. So you can see longer span is six meter, shorter span is. 2.5 meter so we will get the value when you do division uh, 6 by uh, 6 on 2.5 you will get the value 2.4 so it means this is now one way slab what's the reason because one way slab is greater than 2 so now you can see 2.5 is greater than 2 so this slab is one way okay so now the second point is for main bars and distribution bar remember guys main bar and distribution bars concept is in one way and two way slip especially as you can see this is one way slip so in one way slip we have main bar and distribution bars both we have in this that's why because when we place the steel rods on longer direction you can see this is longer direction so as you can see here sorry on shorter direction this is shorter okay so these steel rods these when we place on the shorter direction so these steel rods are called 
these rods. This is distribution bars. These are distribution bars. But when we place on longer span, as you can see, this is longer span. This is also longer span. And we place the steel rods on longer span. So these steel rods are called main bars. Now what is the work of main bar and distribution bars? As you know, when the load applied on the slab, so slab transfer the load, the concrete transfer the load to the distribution bars, this one, which we place on shorter span. So these steel rods transfer the load to the main bars because main bars are placed at the bottom. The first point is main bars should be placed on the bottom of the slab and distribution bars should be placed on the top. So therefore the distribution bars transfer the load to the main bars and main bars transfer the load to the beam and beam to the column, column to the footing or foundation. So therefore uh, this is the uh, method for applied load okay now guys here in one way slab remember in one way slab as you can see this is one way slab so in one way slab we provide the beam on opposite direction on longer span we are providing here in one way slab so this is one way slab okay and two way slab should be less than two the value when we divide longer span by shorter span when the value is less than two so this is two-way slip. So how you will know, how you will know the two-way slip? Remember guys, the two-way and two-way slip, we will place the main bars on both positions. On both position. But here, for one-way slip, the main bar should be here, crank bar, like crank bar as you can see here, like this. We will provide the crank bar. Okay, like this crank bar we will uh, we will make it crank at the end of the support especially at this place like this you can see this is the steel rod here it will come here then here like this so this is main bar okay so here we will provide beams on two opposite side also so here uh, you can see the loads is applied same like this also on this side so this is in two way slab, okay? So this is two way slab. So in two way slab, we don't have distribution bars. We have main bars on both positions. Okay, you can say uh, the, the, on each other, okay, on longer spin and also on shorter spin we will provide. Because this is less than two, we don't provide the distribution. So it means distribution bars is, as well as main bars in two way slab. But here we provide crank bar at uh, at the end of the support on both directions here because the load are applied on both direction but here in this case the load are applied only on one direction same like this like this because here we provide uh, the beams on opposite direction okay only on one side not on two sides so this is the concept of one way slip and two way slip and also main bars and distribution bars now the third point is guys for weight of steel how we can find weight of steel for beam column and slip guys for this we have the specific formula d square divided by 162 suppose i have a steel rod this is a steel rod suppose its dia is 12 mm and the length of the steel rod is suppose one meter and you need the total weight for 12 meter as you can see here suppose I have a steel link which is 12 meter from company from factory we have the standard length of uh, one link one steel rod is 12 meter from factory so therefore this is about 40 feet you can say okay so how we can calculate the weight of steel suppose I am pointing out the weight of steel for 12 millimeter 
which length is 1 meter okay so in this case the 12 should be multiplied with 12 d square so the d should be n millimeter divide by 162 so you will get the value 0 0.88 kg per meter so if you have the length 5 meter 6 meter 12 meter 100 meter 200 meter then you will multiply with that so 12 you will get the total weight got it if this is 12 uh, if this is 10 millimeter 16 millimeter so the formula will be this one you will get the unit weight with that unit weight uh, for one meter means weight of steel for one meter when you do uh, the calculation d square divided by 162 if you put any diameter 16 mm 25 mm 20 mm etc 28 mm then you will get the weight of steel for per meter then you will multiply with total length you will get the total weight of steel rod okay so this is the uh, third one now what is the fourth one so the fourth point is also guys very important as you can see guys here uh, we have the stirrup specially for for beam or uh, for stirrups for beam and lateral ties for column okay so guys we have here this length hooks length so this length you can get with the formula of hooks length you can get with the formula of 10d or 9d you can use where d, d is die of steel rod this one suppose die of this steel rod is for example 8 mm so 8 mm so 10 10 is a constant d is a 8 so it means so we required 80 millimeter steel uh, length for this hook okay next guys the fifth one the fifth, five, uh, the fifth one point is also very important this angle should not be bent with 90 degree same like this you can see most of, and most of the construction i'm telling you practically it should not be provided with 90 degree because this is wrong so it should be provided with 135 degree okay the fifth one is hooks bend with 135 degree not on 90 degrees so this is wrong and this is right so this is the correct way it cannot resist during earthquake for beam column etc okay so this is the fifth point now guys the sixth one is also very important uh, and most of the construction i am uh, seeing this point that if this suppose this is a beam okay and most of the construction so this is exposed this uh, stirrup is export, uh, exposed to the environment it means they uh, those people are not providing the concrete cover guys this is not good to provide the concrete cover suppose i need 12 inches this if the column uh, if the width of the beam is 12 inches so the ring size this ring size should be what it should be 9 inches on each side we should have 40 mm so 25 to 40 mm should be the concrete cover for beam and column this is very compulsory guys on construction side if you are not a technical person and you don't know about civil engineering and you want to construct your house so the concrete cover should be chick with the help of measurement tape if that is 1.5 inch from 1 inch to 1.5 inch it's okay so if there is any problem so you should tell to the labor you should tell to the mason so it should be correct it should not be exposed to the environment so after this date the uh, the labor and mason or the contractor will tell you that uh, we will do plastering for this okay you cannot get the full strength of the beam or column with a plastering but you will get the full strength with concrete so therefore if this is open exposed to the environment so this is uh, not good for the uh, house construction or for beam for anything okay so the concrete cover should be 25 mm to 40 mm this is very compulsory very important so you should do it okay the other one is guys uh, the the seventh one okay so I will write here because I don't have place here so the seven point is here also you can say the development length what is development length guys you can see this is a beam so here at the end so the beam should have 
extra length. So this extra length is called LD denoted by, so this is development length. This development length should not be less than 12 inches. As it is, in column we have development length at the bottom, which we provide on the top of the footing mesh. So this length should not be less than 12 inches. So for that we have also the formula 16 D, where D is die of steel rod. Suppose if the die of steel rod is 16 mm, and LD, uh, okay, so uh, the LD, for example, for this, uh, we have 16 D. So 16 multiply 16. When you get any value here, so that will be the development length for column. But here it should not be less than 12 inches. So this is, uh, these are seven important points which I have discussed the front of you. Hope this video can help you and you should follow. Okay, you should implement on construction site if you are uh, making construction of house. So in that uh, place, you are also able to apply these things. If you don't apply these things, so uh, maybe you will face more problems after some time in your construction. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Goodbye.